got us a walk-in cooler that is not cooling. Wanted to verify evaporators are running. I've already taken a look outside and uh, it's not running. Let's do a quick visual here. You can see that the uh, coil's packed full of garbage. Nothing's running. So let's pop her open and take a peek in there. Okay, it's got power. Nothing's running. Is it because our thermal is open? Both fans are running, so we know that that's uh, not an issue. And she just went down into a pump down. At least it seemed like it. Feel the magnet kicking on, so we know that's uh, calling. Should be running. So I'm gonna check the pressure switch, or it could be the thermal. And she is closed. Nothing left is your safety switch. We have a high pressure switch, we have a low pressure switch. Let's go ahead and get that back cleaned off for right now. looking over here and yeah, just as bad so we're gonna get that cleaned out this ain't the greatest thing in the world but uh, it does serve its purpose it uh, will clean this uh, coil right off I brushed off all the garbage on it first it's just sweating back great and our temperature should be starting to drop Run about 35 degree saturation Wanted to make sure I checked the freezer while I was here. Side glass got bubbles, but one of our fans ain't running. So this is another reason why you don't just do what you're there for. You kind of look around and make sure there's nothing else going wrong. Motor acts like it wants to take off. Yeah, the capacitor or the run windings are out on it. There's our headmaster, which we just did one of those yesterday. Always like to check those caps, they tend to be loose. It's still bubbling. Got the capacitor out, check, make sure your voltage is down, and our capacitor is at 3.8 microfarads, so obviously capacitor is good, it's rated for four. The uh, start windings have gone out in it, so we're gonna have to replace that. This motor uh, has reversible leads, which is kind of nice. It's a uh, 9656, 230 volt, and they've got a 120 volt version also. Got today's date on there so we can keep track of when it was replaced. Because you know the old saying, you were just out here the other day. Sometimes is last year or two years from now. Ready for 0.48, and we're 0.47, so we're right at our full load amps. We're not over. A little purge. Reverse purge. You always want to check your head pressure if you're going to adjust charge. I've made the mistake of not doing it before. Running 404 type of system. There we go. Let's turn on our probes. Activate. Home. 31 pound suction. Got some bubbles again. 
Super Heat 63, that kind of sucks. All right, add a little more juice. This is one of those aluminum microfin coils. Got to make sure it can pump down. Our solenoids outside here. We tend to do that a lot on our systems if they're not real long with runs. Yeah, even with that frosting back like I had, that super heat was up there around eight or nine. And there's still some bubbles. So the TXVs are adjusting because we've not been giving it a full solid column of li uh, liquid. So they're gonna sit there and adjust and open and close and play peekaboo. Okay, we're gonna put this back into the defrost again so we can look for a leak. We'll do a leak search out here at the main section first. Also tells us whether or not it can pump down on its own, whether it's gonna have any problems. We're gonna do this first. It's gonna pump up our head pressure. And then uh, we'll sh and it shuts down, we'll search all that, and then we'll release it, and we'll kill it. That way it's got some refrigerant in the suction side, because as of right now, it don't have anything in the suction, or very little. But it does pump up our uh, high side here. We are calibrated. A little hot, but hey. I'd rather find it than not. All right, she's already starting to let me know that there's something up there. So it looks like we're slightly froze up on the left-hand side. Gonna need to run her through a little bit longer defrost and uh, find out what's leaking up there. But... And she found the leak without even having to get up to it. There's the oil. You can see it there on that black uh, piece of uh, Armaflex there. You can see the oil down in the pan. So we've gotta melt this ice out of here. Just slowly melting this ice out of here. Believe it or not, this actually works rather well. Just a generic little pump sprayer. So all you gotta do is melt it. Otherwise you'll be here forever. And since we get done with that, we're gonna get this over here. Okay, we've got all the ice melted out. We're not getting anything in this area here. Ghosts. Yep. <laughs> That's all the stronger it is for it to be two pounds, something low. Now, just to make certain it's not falling down from up above, I'm not getting anything. that area at all. So uh, we're just gonna, I'll spray it one more time then I'm gonna brace that over and be done. This is the infrared. I don't usually like it as well, but I can't get it to bubble, but yet she goes off, no problem. We can do medium here, see how medium does. Medium does not get it, just high. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna go ahead and pump it down, rebraze that. All right, we just went over top of the uh, braze joint that was there, took the bulb off of the uh, TXV, don't wanna fry it. Um, soon as I hit it with a torch, you could see a crack across there. So I don't know if he moved it or if there was some torque on it or what exactly happened. But as soon as it did that, I could see it. I went ahead and filled it in and uh, everything's happy-go-lucky now. I right, got everything back together, getting ready to run it. Got that all taped back up and wire tied backup plans and uh, go ahead and get her going. Now what's kind of interesting as I'm looking at that headmaster there, it, uh, it's set for 180. This is a brand new unit. And that one yesterday we did was 180. But yet the paperwork showed for 404 we should be running about 210. Which uh, would be more in the 90 degree liquid area. So 
we uh, something I also do too in case you forget that you got that unhooked I always put a piece of metal in there that's just happened to be an extension that will keep you from burning your coil up otherwise you screw up and forget and you wipe your coil out all right I can hear the refrigerant pumping through fan delay termination switch needs to make yet as soon as it does fans will kick on so we at least know that much is working and about 32 33 Fans are actually working. I'm gonna say, looking good. All right, guys, that wraps this one up here. Fixed the leak, forced the coil out, got everything going good, and replaced the condenser fan motor. We weren't even here for this. This is the walk in freezer. The walk in cooler, that was the initial call for being out here. Um, it just wasn't running because it was off on thermal overload. And once again, that was also because the condenser coil was packed full. And then same thing, uh, we went ahead and got the coil cleaned on the ice machine uh, remote condenser there. So if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.